es un símbolo para todos los pueblos oprimidos. Playa Girón es la primera derrota del imperialismo en América Latina, pero también es una de las primeras derrotas del imperialismo en España. Guevara was born in Rosario, Argentina in 1928. He studied medicine at the University of Buenos Aires, where he worked as a doctor. While in Guatemala in 1954, he witnessed the socialist government of President Jacobo Arbenz overthrown by an American-backed military coup. Disgusted by what he saw, Guevara decided to join the Cuban revolutionary Fidel Castro in Mexico. In 1956, Guevara, Castro, and 80 other men and women arrived in Cuba in an attempt to overthrow the government of General Fulgenio Batista. This group became known as the July 26th Movement. The plan was to set up their base in the Sierra Maestra Mountains. On the way to the mountains, they were attacked by government troops. By the time they reached the Sierra Maestra, there were only 16 men left with 12 weapons between them. For the next few months, Castro's guerrilla army raided isolated army garrisons and were gradually able to build up their stock of weapons. When the guerrillas took control of territory, they redistributed the land among the peasants. And in return, the peasants helped the guerrilla against Batista's soldiers. In some cases, the peasants also joined Castro's army, as did students from the cities and occasionally Catholic priests. The U.S. supplied Batista with planes, ships, and tanks, but the advantage of using the latest technology failed to win them victory against these guerrillas. In March 1958, President Dwight Eisenhower, who was disillusioned with Batista's performance, suggested that he hold elections, which he did, but the people were so dissatisfied with the government, they refused to vote. Over 75% of the voters in Havana boycotted the polls. In places such as Santiago, it was as high as 98%. Fidel Castro was now confident that he could beat Batista in a head-on battle. He left the Sierra Maestra Mountains and his troops began to march to the main towns. After consulting with the U.S. government, Batista decided to flee the country. Senior generals left behind attempted to set up another military government. Castro's reaction was to call for a general strike. The workers came out on strike and the military were forced to accept the people's desire for change. Castro marched into Havana on January 9, 1959, and became Cuba's new leader. In its first hundred days in office, Castro's government passed a lot of new laws. Rents were cut by up to 50% for low-income earners. Properties owned by Batista and his ministers were confiscated. The phone company was nationalized, the rates were reduced by 50%. Land was redistributed among the peasants. Even the land owned by the Castro family. Separate facilities for blacks and whites, swimming beaches, hotels, and cemeteries were abolished. In 1960, Guevara visited China and the Soviet Union. And on his return, he wrote two books, Guerrilla Warfare and Reminiscences of the Cuban Revolutionary War. In this book, he argued that it was possible to export Cuba's revolution to other South American countries. Guevara served as Minister for Industries from 1961 to 65, but in April 65, he resigned and he became a guerrilla leader in Bolivia. In 1967, David Morales recruited Felix Rodriguez to train and head up a team that would attempt to catch Che Guevara. Guevara was attempting to persuade the tin miners living in poverty to join his revolutionary army. When Guevara was captured, it was Rodriguez who interrogated him before he ordered him executed in October 1967. Rodriguez still possesses Guevara's Rolex watch, which he took as a trophy. In their book called Ultimate Sacrifice, published in 2006, Lamar Waldron and Tarm Hartman argued that in 1963, Guevara was involved in a plot with Juan Almeida Bosch to overthrow Fidel Castro.